this is Silver Bullet, and today I'm going to show you uh, real quick uh, the game Cold War CIA vs. KGB. I went to a cafe recently and played it and uh, found it to be a pretty fantastic game, so I thought I'd make a pretty quick um, introduction to it, uh, give you a sort of breakdown of how the rules go and how to play it. Uh, it's a game that sort of combines Blackjack with the game called Citadel, if you ever played it. Uh, Citadel is a pretty good game. Uh, the game is a two-player game here, and... Um, Let's get uh, through this right away. I'm going to use Tabletop Simulator to sort of demonstrate everything, mainly because I'm lazy. Um, this mod was not created by me at all. It was by Decumanus Maximus, uh, D-E-C-U-M-A-N-U-S-M-A-X-I-M-U-S. -U -U uh, so complete props to him for making this awesome mod uh, for Tabletop Simulator um, and allowing me to sort of play, uh, uh, to explain to you how to play the game and also to use it to play in the game in the near future, hopefully. All right, so. So, <clears throat> two players send in the Cold War. One side is KGB, the other side is CIA. Uh, with the exception of the names themselves, really the sides are identical. There's nothing uh, insanely different that um, you know the sides can play as, unlike uh, games like Twilight Struggle and things like that. Um, <coughs> basically, the way the game works is you fight for objectives. You, well, you first... Uh, place agents down. You um, reveal while well, you reveal an objective. Place agents down, uh, and then uh, play groups to fight for the objective. Um, somebody claims the objective. The agents can change the outcome of it, and people will score. The name of the game is to get to 100 points. Once you get to 100 points, you've won. Uh, I don't think there's really any way to get a tie or things like that, though. Actually. No, I could see that. I forget exactly what the tiebreaker is. I think it's to play another round, and, and whoever wins that round wins. I could be wrong on that, though. Um, but let's begin. Uh, so the way the game is played is you first assign a balance token. Now, the first time for the first round that the game goes on, the balance token just goes to somebody randomly. You can flip a coin, just say, I'm cool, I get the balance token, whatever you like. Uh, the balance token basically makes it so that the person in the influence struggle uh, gets to choose who goes first. Uh, which can be, you know, awesome for some people and terrible for other people. So, you know, it, uh, after the first round, whoever um, is lowest on points gets the balance token, and um, who, and that would be given during the briefing phase, uh, along with um, if both people are tied with the lowest VP, then whoever uh, won the previous objective um, or laid down the domination token, I should say. Uh, or whoever lost the objective, that's what it is. Whoever lost the objective uh, gets the balance token. So that's how this works. Um, so uh, first off, uh, you flip the objective. So we'll do that. We'll go over what the objective cards are and the like. Um, in the bottom right, you'll see the score. This is how many points the objective is worth. So if you claim it, uh, you get 15 points, which is really nice. Uh, the middle is the stability score. This is the number that you want to get to, uh, get as close as possible to or equal to, but you do not want to go over it. When you go over it, bad things happen. Your agent will get lost and other terrible things like that. Um, fin uh, th finally, the left is the <coughs> population limit. This is the maximum amount of groups you can have uh, for this objective. Um, groups we'll get into, but basically um, groups, uh, there's four different types of groups and they have a number associated with them. So you could have up to four groups for this. And uh, the groups you draw out during the influence struggle. So for the briefing struggle, you flip an objective, you sign the balance token, so I'll just go ahead and take it. And then uh, you shuffle the group deck. And so it's important to know that every round, any groups that you've discarded, uh, they go back into the shuffle deck. So you're starting with a fresh deck every round for the groups. Um, so we'll just sort of play it as if. Uh, next is the planning phase. So you get to select an agent X. Now agents um, are, are really neat. They sort of can completely change how you would play the game and it's also used to sort of freak out or, or fool your opponent um there's six types of agents and the way they act is in order of their number so the master spy would go first at the end of the round uh these guys act at the end of the round and they all do different things um you also that there's an assassin and she can kill people and if your agents get killed by the assassin they're out of the game for good you you can't get them back unless a certain there's one objective or that has a special power Power associated 
with it where if you discard the objective you lose those five points i think that it's worth but you can recover an agent that was terminated uh but typically once an agent is terminated by the assassin it's gone for good um now the agents do different things and it all depends on how the objective plays out so we'll go in order real quick uh as to what each agent does um, and these are the same for both the CIA and the KGB. So uh, the first um, uh, priority one agent is Master Spy. And you'll see the cards just like this in, um, or just like this in the actual game. Uh, you'll see a red and blue uh, uh, icon. This is sort of how the character will react depending on what the... Um, uh, domination token gets placed on the objective now basically just to go over that real quick uh, at the end of the influence struggle um, whoever is closest to the number uh, or whoever is closest to the number um, gets to place the domination token onto the objective uh, if you both tie it's whoever has the highest number of a certain type the highest single card number of the bias type <coughs> Of the biased type, so uh, if you had the the red co colored card, if you had a six, and I had a five, and I had no starred colored card, but we both had eleven, you would get the objective. You would get to place the domination token on the objective. Um, and the way the master spy works is, you actually want to lose. You don't want to place your domination token on top of the card. You want to trick your opponent into uh, dominating the objective instead, because. Uh, with the master spy, you're, you claim the objective. Wh whoever has the uh, domination token on top, the other person claims the objective. So if you unfortunately win the hand, your opponent gets to claim it. But if um, they put their domination token on it, you get to claim it. And claiming it meaning you get to take it, put it in your, um, your objectives that you've won and uh, you get to move your scoreboard. The scoreboard, uh, you would get that 15 points and you would get to put your um, little square thingy that comes with the board game onto the scorecard to dictate you've won 15 points. Uh, the deputy director is actually described pretty interestingly in the game. I think he's he's described as incompetent and other cool things. Oh, hey, look, that's me. All right, uh, yeah, so uh, the deputy director, he... Does he has no effect, but he doesn't die. He doesn't go on leave either, and he can't be terminated by agents. Um, so he's he allows you to sort of play very risky, uh, and, and you don't pay as much for it. Um, that's really all the deputy director does. Uh, it doesn't matter what influence, uh, what domination token ends up being on there. Um, you then have the double agent. The double agent is pretty cool. You get to choose one. Um, uh, you get to either choose a, an agent type at your opponent's headquarters and send him immediately on leave, or in the next turn, uh, planning in the next turn's planning phase, you force your opponent to reveal agent X's identity before you choose your own. So basically, I mean, it, it's a very nice card in terms of uh, you can. Uh, basically, in the planning phase, you select an agent X. You now know what your opponent's going to choose, so you can react accordingly. Try to assassinate them if they're choosing the director and things like that. Really cool stuff. Um, some some things of note here: deputy director. If two people tie, uh, or, or if two people chose the same agent, some weird things can happen. Um, the master spy, for instance, I believe only the master spy that. Uh, has the domination token on top acts so if we both had chosen the master spy it doesn't matter um it the the one action would occur and that's it uh for the double agent if we if both sides choose the double agent and this is all described in the um uh instruction booklet too like on the agents page uh like last sentences but the double agent if you both pick the double agent the person who won the objective or has the domination token on top of the objective gets to do the action the other person is not um uh so then there's the analyst and also for the analyst if both people pick the analyst the person who did not place the objective token on the objective gets to do this action and at the end of the next turn's phase 
Uh, you can look at the top three cards of the group deck and replace them in any order you choose. This is an extremely helpful card when you have the balance order deck because there are cards, uh, there are objectives that require, um, that have only one population limit and having this card played when that happens is really, really nice. Finally, you have the assassin. The assassin is nice because you get, if you get the objective, if you get to place your domination token on the objective, you terminate your opponent's Sage and X. Um, however, <coughs> this does come at a cost. You put the objective that you've just won at the bottom of the objective deck. So it does. you don't get any points when you play the uh, Assassin. Um, you're sacrificing whatever points you could possibly get from the uh, objective to kill off the agent. Um, so it's a, a great thing because that agent is gone forever, ideally. But it's an unfortunate thing because you no longer you, you didn't get any points. And finally, the director and he acts last. This is something important to note because if I played the assassin and somebody else played the director, and I guess this wouldn't really ever happen anyway. But somehow uh, the direct well, yeah, I guess technically that never happened. But basically, the assassin's action would happen before the director's. Um, it happens, uh, but everybody else gets to do their action before they get killed off by the assassin. Uh, uh, but basically, the director, he's sort of your bank card. Um, if you win the objective, you get to claim the objective on the bottom of the objective deck. So you, in essence, double the, um, it can potentially at least double the points that you're getting from the objective deck. <coughs> super helpful agent. All of them are very super helpful agents. And so you get to select one and you place them down, um, not letting your opponent know. And so we're gonna, I'm going to do like a, a fake couple rounds just to, to show how to play. But I'm going to choose, uh, as I like to do, the assassin first uh, and I'm just gonna choose a random card I think these are all unflipped so I'm just gonna grab that one and place them there all right so that's how that goes um, so both of, both of us have chosen an agent X at this point and that's it uh, now something that happens at the end of the round is an agent goes on leave so after the round's over I've revealed my objective it's played out my guy's still alive he goes on leave now that means I can't play him the next next round um, the deputy director does not get affected by this he doesn't go on leave he goes directly back to your hand but everybody else they go on leave unless they're killed um, and they, they're out for the rounds uh, on the planning phase, all on leave agents go back to HQ. So uh, on the next objective that's pulled out, you can and you would be selecting an agent. Then the on leave agents can go back to the HQ. Um, so that's that. Uh, so the influence struggle begins. Uh, whoever has the balance token gets to choose who goes first. And let's go over the groups and all that real quick. Uh, so. Uh, basically, you would choose who to go first, and you have one of three actions. You can recruit a group, you can activate a group, or you can pass. Now, the end of the influence struggle phase happens when both players pass back to back. Uh, you can, you, the, your very first action, if you have no groups, it has to be to recruit a group. Um, aside from that, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can pass a turn, your opponent can do something, you can pass a turn, your opponent can do another thing, you can, pa you can then decide, oh, I need to react, I'm going to do something, and then your opponent can pass, and you can send you to go because you don't have a back-to-back -back pass. <coughs> so, um, here we go, uh, let's, let's just for fun um, start, I haven't gone over to groups yet, so we'll do that uh, while I also recruit. So we're fighting for Iran, me and the CIA. Uh, which is myself, which is a little ironic, but that's cool. So I have an economy card now. To, a couple things. Uh, this is an economy type card. Uh, the way you use this card is you can mobilize any ready group or ready any mobilized group. You can't ready um, economic cards. You can't just keep going back and forth. Uh, economy cards being this. Uh, basically, when you use a card, you flip it this way and you use it on whatever card you want to use it on. Um, so we'll get into that more, but I have four right now, which is a great card, but not fantastic. And now they would go, and um, yeah, they would place it there, and they have a five. So right now, if I was to pass, that would probably not be a smart idea, because they could pass, and then they win. 
and then they'll win the objective. So they have a five, and this is a, uh, what is it? I can't think of this stupid name. Uh, <coughs> I can't think of the name of the card. Uh, I'm going to say media. That's what it is. Sorry. Yes, media. Uh, basically, the way these guys work, again, this game is very descriptive and has everything written on it, but you get to look at the top of the card, card on the group deck, then recruit it, discard it, or leave it where it was. So I'll go next. Um, actually, you know what? I don't really like that card, but just for the sake of... Sh actually, no, for showing things, I'm going to use my card and have his card get used. So these cards you can use on your opponent as well as yourself. There's one card in particular that I'll get into shortly that um, sort of changes things. So I've already used my turn. Now this person can't do anything else. Uh, he could either play defensively or be aggressive. He's going to be aggressive and recruit another card. So he has an economy card. It's a three, so he's got eight in total, which is pretty nice. So we go back to me, and I'll recruit a group. And um, it's a military group. Military groups are quite nice. Uh, so what he's going to do is um, ready that up and ready that up. And now military cards, there are the green cards, and they allow you to basically kill any other group that exists. Uh, you basically send them to the, send them to their discard pile, it goes away forever and such. Now because I want to show how this card works, I'm not going to, to use that on him, but I'm going to use him and take this guy away from him because I want him to have 5. I'm at 9, so I'm pretty close to 11, but not quite there yet. All the cards have a type from 6 to... Uh, all the all four different types of cards have numbers six to one for their types and um, they all act the same it doesn't matter what number they are but the numbers affect the stability so it's his turn and he's going to go ahead and use this so he's going to be able to look at the top deck he's going to look at it he won't be showing me this and then he can decide oh I don't want it uh, he can put it back where it was or he can recruit it. And he's going to recruit it because this is the fourth uh, group that I was talking about. Now this group is the po political group uh, card. And the, when you use it, you can either steal a group from your opponent <coughs> or give him one of yours. However, there are a few catches here. Um, the population limit rule still applies. If I had four cards, he could not give me... Uh, he or she could not give me a card that would put me at five cards. Additionally, as sneaky as it is and as nice as it would be, you can also not give them a card that would push them over the stability limit. So, perfect example here. I would love to use this card and give this person this card uh, like so. Now I'm at 14 and oh god, everything's terrible, but that's not a legitimate move, uh, not allowed. And also, when you give the card away, they don't magically go to a ready position they go to whatever position that card was originally in so um what he's actually uh, he's recruited so, oh no, no 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 we we've i'm sorry i forget if he recruited on this turn or not but we're just going to assume he didn't um oh yeah yeah no no he Oh, no, no, he did. Yeah, he did. Okay, sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm back on track. So I'm at nine. I'm going to pass. So that really mattered a whole lot. All right, so this person's at eight. And they want 11. So 9, 10, 11. All right, they can't do anything um, here. They could use this card to steal the four. Now, again, it, even though this would technically be a bad move, this they, going there and taking this card, perfectly legitimate move because that uh, recruiting a group over the stability limit is not... Um, a bad move uh, is not illegal if you do it on yourself. It's just illegal if you do it on your opponent. So he's at eight. I'm at nine. He's going to recruit a group. And he is at nine. He's at 12. And that's quite unfortunate for him. So he's going to have to play ballsy or something. And I'm just going to go ahead and pass because I'm in a safe spot here. He's the one struggling now. <coughs> And he's going to end up recruiting another group. And he gets the card he needed, which is rather unfortunate. So I'm still at 9. Um, and I'll pass for now. Uh, because I don't want any of these cards. He's going to use his military to eliminate his own group. And now he's at 9 as well. Nice move there. Um, I'm at 9 and he's at 9. Uh, I'm going to actually have to play it, so I'll play a card. And the reason why this is, is because if I pass, the best move for him to be, do would be to pass because uh, we both tie at this point, but he has the political card that is three. 
And I, um, I do not have a political card that is higher than three. And so I don't have any political cards. He'd end up winning the objective. Uh, additionally, just as a note, um, you cannot look through the discard pile. So you can't be like, oh, how many cards are left? That type of thing. Um, and also... There was something else I was going to say, but I can't remember it. So let's flip it. I got a military card, which is quite nice. And also, I have too high, too many cards, which is a problem. So uh, it's his turn. He's at nine, and he's not going to do anything because he doesn't want that card, and he's in a really nice position right now. I'm going to use this and eliminate uh, the industry. So now I'm at eight cards. Uh, I'm at six, seven, eight. He's going to pass again just because he's a jerk. And I'll recruit another group. So I'm at two. Uh, that's five. Uh, that's ten for me, which is rather nice. However, this person's at nine. Ten, eleven is what he wants. So he's going to use this and grab this card. And he's also going to take that away from me because he's a jerk. So I'm at eight, six, seven, eight. And we have the assassin, but again, we don't want to risk losing her. So the what? I, I don't think I actually got into that. Uh, what ends up happening if you go over the objective count is basically um, whichever government um, went over the uh, count, or if both even go over the count, uh, then everybody disavows uh, all knowledge of like what happened at the objective. And the agent is eliminated. Whatever agent you played gets eliminated, and the other person gets the objective, no matter what, really. Um, the other object, the other person would place the domination token on there, and unless they had the master spy, um, <coughs> they would claim the objective, I believe. Um, <coughs> uh, one interesting thing is if both of us. Both um, players go over the objective limit, then the objective goes to the bottom of the deck, and that's that. Now, I don't want to lose the assassin. I have 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm going to need 3. There's been a lot of high cards, but I'm not feeling it, so I'm going to end up passing. They're going to pass, and they're going to get to claim the objective, which is quite unfortunate. Um, just for fun, I'm going to see. Yeah, I made a very good choice there because I would have been in real trouble had I gotten that. Um, so they're at 11, they get the objective. Uh, now we reveal our, and now we're in the ceasefire, so we get to reveal and resolve our agents. So he had, I had the assassin, and I, since I did not get the objective, I do not get to kill his agent, and he has the analyst. So at the end of his turn, he gets to see the top three cards of the group deck and gets to. Um, uh, gets a lot more hidden information that I don't get, which is quite unfortunate. He also gets 15 points, so he takes the objective and uh, can move his point counter to 15. Um, I get to keep the balance token. Uh, we put our cards back into the discard fully. And... Um, the agents go on leave. So the agents go on leave for both of us, and in essence, a new round begins. So a uh, objective would be flipped. We have one uh, an objective that takes one card, which I'll do real quickly because these are typically fast. You'll notice that this objective, some of them have sort of special abilities. For this, you can discard the objective and return to return a terminated agent to the game. It returns on leave and not at the headquarters. Uh, so if I were to claim this objective and I had a terminated agent. I could at any point um, set uh, use this and uh, discard it. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry. It does say it, you can only use it in Detente or the debriefing where you reveal and resolve. <coughs> and you could use it to get your agent back. Uh, when you discard the objective, you lose those points. So those five points, you're more or less spending those five points to use a special power, but it can be very helpful. Uh, so we'll do this real quick. Um, I think I screwed up. Yeah, I, I accidentally. That's okay, though. Oh, stack. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, we'll put those back. We'll shuffle it up again. And so we're playing for the, the Agent X here. I'm not feeling... I'm feeling good about this. I'm going to just cast my director out there because I'm feeling ballsy. Um, 
typically with ones, I like to cast it as a, uh, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I like to cast the assassin out because it's very small amount of points I have to pay to kill the agent. Uh, but you know, so we're going to do, uh, the Olympic games. I get the balance token because, um, I get the balance token because I have the low, I lost the last one and I also have the lowest amount of points. Uh, we've shuffled the group deck. Um, so I've selected an agent X and now the assassin will go back to headquarters. I won't be able to use them until next turn, but you know, that's just how it goes. Um, so I'm going to choose that the CIA goes first because I never like going first on these These are always typically short and not too good. Oh my god. All right, so it gets a five which is not ideal um, And now it's my turn and I get a four and there's just there's nothing I can do uh, Which is really quite unfortunate. So he will pass I will have to be forced to pass and again uh, the domination token will go to him um we're quite unfortunate there's really no there's no way to discard your groups especially when there's only one um and also technically speaking he should have uh used his agent power i forgot to do that but he would have used his agent powers to see the top three so this is sort of fitting because he was banking on me go saying he goes first something along those lines anyway um yep so he put, gets to place his domination token on and we uh Again, flip bars. I was the director trying to bank on getting the double points, and I failed. He was the double agent, so he gets to choose if I put one of my agents on leave or if I put um, or if I reveal next turn. And the game goes on and on. He would get five points and things like that. Um, anyway, I think that really roughly sums up um, how to play Cold War versus K uh, Cold War CIA versus KGB. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if I did anything wrong, let me know. I don't believe I did, though. I think everything uh, was smooth. I'll be the proud owner of this game pretty soon, playing it with a couple friends of mine. Um, hope you enjoy, and if, uh, you know, I uh, hope you have an excellent day. And if you, if you found this video enjoyable, let me know, because I might f try to do more. And I recommend the, a board game for me to go into and explain. I know quite, I, I supposedly I'm really good with rules. Um, which most of the time I'm like pretty right in, but uh, you know, it's up to you to decide that. Anyway, have an excellent one. This is Silver Bullet, and this is uh, Cold War CIA versus KGB. Again, thanks to Dickie Maximus for this brilliant mod for Tabletop Simulator.